I'd like to read just a little bit tonight. You can see I'm in my robe, it's bedtime, but a uh, little bedtime story, uh, history-wise. I'd like to read uh, at least part of the speech that Anwar Sadat um, gave to the uh, Israeli Knesset in, uh, well, on November 20th, 1977. Let's just get right into it. Uh, my bedtime reading. In the name of God, Mr. Speaker of the Knesset, ladies and gentlemen, allow me first to thank deeply the Speaker of the Knesset for affording me this opportunity to address you. As I begin my address, I wish to say, peace and the mercy of God Almighty be upon you, and may peace be with us all, God willing. Peace for us all of the Arab lands and in Israel, as well as in every part of this big world, which is so beset by conflicts, perturbed by its deep contradictions, menaced now and then by destructive wars, launched by man to annihilate his fellow man. Finally, amidst the ruins of what man has built among the remains of the victims of mankind, there emerges neither victor nor vanquished. The only vanquished remains always a man, God's most sublime creation. Man, whom God has created, as Gandhi, the apostle of peace, puts it, to forge ahead, to mold the way of life, and to worship God Almighty. I come to you today on solid ground to shape a new life, and to establish peace. That's what he said. We all love this land, the land of God. We all, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, all worship God. Under God, God's teachings and commandments are love, security, sincerity, and peace. I do not blame all those who received my decision when I announced it to the entire world before the Egyptian People's Assembly. I do not blame all those who received my decision with surprise and even with amazement. Some gripped even by violent surprise. Still others interpreted it as a political. They interpreted it as political to camouflage my intentions of launching a new war. I would go so far as to tell you that one of my aides at the presidential office contacted me at a late hour following my return home from the People's Assembly and sounded worried as he asked me, Mr. President, what would be our reaction if Israel actually extended an invitation to I replied calmly. I would accept it immediately. I have declared that I would go to the ends of the earth. I would go to Israel, for I want to put before the people of Israel all of the facts. I can see the faces of all those who were astounded by my decision and had doubts as to the sincerity of the intentions behind the declaration of my decision. No one could have ever conceived that the president of the biggest Arab state, which bears the heaviest burden and the main responsibility pertaining to the cause of war and peace in the Middle East, should declare his readiness to go to the land of the adversary while we were still in a state of war. We all still bear the consequences of four fierce wars waged within 30 years all this at the time when the families of the 1973 uh, October War are still mourn mourning under the cruel pain of bereavement of father, son, husband, and brother. As I have already declared, I have not consulted as far as this decision is concerned with any of my colleagues or brothers, the Arab heads of state, or the confrontation states. 
Most of those who contacted me following the declaration of this decision expressed their objection because of the feeling of utter suspicion and absolute lack of confidence between the Arab states and the Palestine people on the one hand and Israel on the other that still surges in us all. Many months in which peace could have been brought about have been wasted over differences and fruitless discussions on the procedure of convening the Geneva Conference. All have shared procedure of convening the excuse me. All have shared suspicion and absolute lack of confidence. But to be absolutely frank with you, I took this decision after long thought, knowing that it constitutes a great risk, for God Almighty has made it my fate to assume responsibility on behalf of the Egyptian people to share in the responsibility of the Arab nation, the main duty of which uh, dictated my responsibility. Uh, dictated by responsibility it's late. is to exploit all and every means in a bid to save my Egyptian Arab people and the pan-Arab nation from the horrors of new suffering and destructive wars the dimensions of which are foreseen only by God himself. After long thinking, I was convinced that the obligation of responsibility before God and before the people make it incumbent upon me that I should go to the far corners of the world, even to Jerusalem, to address members of the Knesset and acquaint them with all the facts surging in me. Then I would let you decide for yourselves. Following this, may God Almighty determine our fate. Ladies and gentlemen, there are moments in the lives of nations and peoples when it is incumbent upon those known for their wisdom and clarity of vision to survey the problem. With all its complexities and vain memories in a bold drive toward new horizons. Those who, like us, are shouldering the same responsibilities entrusted to us are the first who should have the courage to make determining decisions that are consistent with the magnitude of the circumstances. We must all rise above all forms of obsolete theories of superiority. And the most important thing is never to forget that infallibility is the prerogative of God alone. If I said that I wanted to avert from all the Arab people the horrors of shocking and destructive wars, I must sincerely declare before you that I have the same feelings and bear the same responsibility toward all and every man on earth, and certainly toward the Israeli people. Any life that is lost in war is a human life, be it that of an Arab or an Israeli. A wife who becomes a widow is a human being entitled to a happy family life, whether she be an Arab or an Israeli. Innocent children who are deprived of the care and compassion of their parents are ours. They are ours by, be they living on Arab or Israeli land. They command our full responsibility to afford them a comfortable life today and tomorrow. For the sake of them all. For the sake of the lives of all our sons and brothers. For the sake of affording our communities the opportunity to work for the progress and happiness as man. Feeling secure and with the right to a dignified life for the generations to come 
for a smile on the face of every child born in our land. For all that, I have taken my decision to come to you, despite all the hazards, to deliver my address. Well, let's let that be part one. If you want to hear more, I'll read more to you. Maybe tomorrow night. If not, that's okay too, right? I found something very vital that applies to our world today in his world.